Welcome back, you guys. I'm Paige. And I'm Cindy. And this is Mom's, Mom's the Word, where, where Mom, Mom knows best. <laughs> or at least she's trying her best. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. We're oh. back at it again, friend. So, first of all, I just want to, like, do a huge shout out because we have over 2,000 listeners. We have over 2,000 subscribers, subscribers on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. We have 20,000 listeners. listeners. We have 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, though. So, if you're listening on Apple and Spotify and you didn't realize that we have a YouTube version, we do indeed. We do. With fancy cameras that Ben provides us. It is so beautiful. So, if you haven't checked <laughs> out our YouTube yet, go ahead because you'll get to see exactly what we're looking like while we're shooting in our awesome pajamas. Halloween set. Here at the Museum of Neon Lights. We're really excited to be here. Absolutely beautiful. (laughs) We do wear pajamas. We do. Every time. I'm comfortable like this. Same. I don't want to be in jeans sitting down and I'm going to have to pull them all the way up to here. Oh, literally. You're like uncomfortable. Just comfortably sit and then I'm trying to get a a t-shirt that looks good too. I'm being behind the lights when it's all hot. It is hot, y'all. It is hot in here. (laughs) They give us movie lights so that we look beautiful for you. (laughs) How's everybody doing? You know... I'm still like in the thick of um, newborn stage. Yeah. But also with the almost toddler now and yeah. a kid. It's just wild. I'm like, you're super woman. Exhausted, but thriving, right? Like, yeah. It's just so fun to be in. I'm getting used to the newborn schedule finally. And, yeah. Uh, it's been a couple weeks now, so I feel really good about that. How yeah. are you? Your baby's coming out of the newborn stage almost, right? Yeah. She's almost seven months now. That's insane. It's blows my mind actually because I feel like I just had her as well as I still feel so fresh in my postpartum yes. journey too yes. so it's like wow it, it's kind of it, it's kind of weird to balance both of them to feel like I just had a baby but then yeah. you look at this baby and you're like you're about to be one you're closer to one than you are to the day you were born all the emotions and I hear like I don't know if this is true or not but I've heard that your postpartum will hold on for like till she's like two I fucking insane. hope not which is insane. I think it is like moms are continuously going through a postpartum um, until their child is about two years old. And you're a breastfeeding <laughs> mom, so that could last even longer. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's a lot. It is a lot. And you try not to blame everything on the on the hormones, right? You yes. try to be like, yes. no, I'm a normal person. I'm not <laughs> feeling these things because of this. And then God forbid your husband brings it up. Uh-huh. My poor husband. If he's like, honey, are, are you just, you know, feeling I a know. little overwhelmed today with the hormones? I'll be like, that's not the hormones. I'll like you know? call Paige and I'm like, are you okay? I'm always in the bath. <laughs> She's always in the bath. <laughs> And I'm like, All right, please tell me you're not crying right now. But crying is good. So I'm like, go I'd ahead be and cry. crying. She'd be crying. I'd be crying. <laughs> I should probably cry. You know, let it out. I'm not very good at it. Let it go. I've, I've had a lot of emotional things going on lately. Uh, you do. You do. And I should cry more. I've been really emotional, but I don't share that side of me because mm-hmm. a lot of things I can't share yet. Yeah. But I have some huge or ever. news that I get to share. Are you excited? Are you ready to say it right now? I'm very excited. You're going to say it? (laughs) Okay, (laughs) y'all. I don't think you understand how huge this news is. So everybody just drum roll, please. I'm very excited to announce that we are adopting. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We're adopting. We're adopting. Sugar baby is staying. (laughs) (laughs) So it's been a very emotional journey for me because as you know, and people who follow me know, I really pour into reunification and, you know, them going back to their family. But there comes a time that that's not an option. Yeah. And so, of course, we're going to say yes Mm -hmm. and get to love him forever. Mm -hmm. So here's the first time probably people are hearing this, that his name will be Fox. Fox! And so we're excited. We have Bear, who's seven, my biological son, and then we have Fox. Now, those are not their bio, their names, their real names, but, you know, we, they like nicknames. That's what you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. And Fox, people are going to ask, like, how'd you get that name? So um, Bear, actually, when we had him as a newborn, uh, of course, behind the scenes, we do call them by their real names. Their names, they're beautiful. But Bear was like, I'm Bear, and he can be Fox. And so it just caught on. Mm-hmm. And we knew about six months in that we were moving towards adoption. Right. And so we kind of like transitioned to like Colleen Fox, still sugar baby on the internet, Mm -hmm. but I'm just very excited to share that with you guys. And it's been really emotional. I've been afraid to share it because, um, I really, um, respect their family, his family, Mm -hmm. biological families, and I wanted to do it the right way. Um, but just know that this is the way that it needs to be and it's going to be beautiful and I can't wait to still respect his family throughout this and whatnot but 
Absolutely. I'm excited to share that. <laughs> That's so exciting. And this is your first adoption it is. from your foster yes. care journey. Yes. Because I know you guys are a foster to adopt we are. family, yes. which basically means if it's not an option to right. be reunified, right. that you would say yes. Right. Because you never go into foster care thinking we're adopting. You just don't. Right. That's not the right reason. That there are not. people who do that, yes. but it's not the right reason. Yes. Yeah. So when we went into it, we thought we already have, they're our biological son. We just have the means and the love and the home that we could take care of more children. So we're like, let's be foster parents. It was on our heart and let's support these families. And we yeah. have happily sent home over 10 kiddos, either, you know, kinship, family, back to biological parents, things mm-hmm. like that, to better situations. And I'm very proud of that. Yeah. So for this to be our 13th child and we are adopting, I'm honored. I'm honored to be his mom forever. Now. Yeah. So. And I don't think you even said, I know you just said, you know, we knew in month six that yeah. that's where we were going. Yeah. I don't think you even switched because now this is what, month 11? Yes. So she's known and had to keep this a secret for the last five months. Yes. And I don't honestly think that until about three weeks ago when you got the calls for like official papers. Yeah that you even switched into, this is my child. No. I didn't see that at all from you. As a foster parent, me specifically, I can speak for myself, Mm -hmm. I pour into them like they are my children no matter what. Mm -hmm. But in my heart, I know they're going home. That's what I want to believe. That is the goal. Mm -hmm. And so until that final paperwork is signed, they Mm -hmm. could be going home. And that's okay because that's their their family. Um, And so... It, it's hard for me to switch that gear because a lot of our, all of ours have gone home. And yes. so, yeah, when we got about six months, um, things took a turn and we knew that it was moving towards adoption. Mm-hmm. That's when we started to like really think like, OK, this could happen. And it was really emotional for me over these last couple of months because I was sad. I was I was happy, of course, that he gets to stay with me. I've had him since he was born. But I was sad because somebody else is going to miss out on that. And they had missed out on all of it. Absolutely. All of it. And so it is very sad. It's one of those things that happiness, but there's a lot of sadness behind it. Of course. It's a, a, they say, you know, bittersweet. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So getting into what you're comfortable sharing with your journey with Fox, when was he placed with you? Yeah. So I'm going to share what I can. Now, this is my journey as a foster parent. I will never share Fox's journey until we adopt him. And then, you know, he is a hoffer. Mm -hmm. But um, so we um, got uh, we received Fox straight from the hospital when he was two days old. Okay. Um, It was in December around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And he was this itty bitty guy and he was sweet as can be. Um, And now we've had him 11 months. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, that's always in the beginning is very hard. You get this baby from the hospital and they come with trauma no matter what. And you have to, you know, go through that stages with him. Um, but it was just so sweet. You know, I, I've had six newborns. And so getting him um, was just another newborn that I got to love on. And hopefully, you know, he would you know, have connections to his family and things like that. And at this time, it just wasn't possible for mm-hmm. some things to happen. Things are out of my control. Right. Um, and so it quickly moved towards adoption, which was very surprising for me. Right. It was yeah. very abrupt. Very. It, it's, it always is because usually, you know, we're, we're actively working towards helping the family, giving them um, resources, being a support. Mm-hmm. Um, and this time it was very quiet. So that was very interesting for me because usually it's never like that. It's not been like your other experiences. No. And I can't go into depth as to how, but just know that this is the quietest case that I've ever had. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know. It's a good place for a break for yeah. a moment just to regather thoughts. Just because I, I I have to be very careful with what I ask. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. I don't want to uh, overstep boundaries. Yes. Too, you know? Yes. Let's make sure we're holding our mic in front of our mouth. I will. I will when I'm ready. Uh-huh. I'm going to eat this fucking <laughs> <laughs> No, just stop. Just stop. It is a, it's a sensitive topic. Yeah. Right? Adoption is a sensitive topic because there are different ways to go about adopting. Right. Mm-hmm. And for us, we adopted through foster care Mm -hmm. and we did not want to go through a private agency. And I know some people do, I respect their decisions, but for us, we wanted to take a child in who needed a family, um, excuse me, when, who needed a family when theirs needed help. Yeah. And it's so sad that I've seen so many families, um, you know, have their children removed, but it's been a beautiful thing because I've seen them come out of it. Mm -hmm. And so 
this has been different for us. We, we've always had our foster to adopt license. We just never knew if we were ever going to use it. We just, right. But we wanted to be that option. So here in the state of Texas, guardianship is not an option. So what that means is that let's say there's a child um, who comes to that point of adoption and you can say, well, I would just rather be their guardian. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not sure for teens, I don't have teens, but for littles, it's, it's not an option here. So it's adoption um, or they sit in the system. And so it's either whoever the child is you have in your home, you adopt them or they're going to find an adoptive home. Mm -hmm. And so when that decision got brought to us, hey, would you guys like to adopt? Of course we would. Right. We are the only family that he knows. Did y'all have any second thoughts? Never. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it wasn't even a no, thought in your mind to be like. He is beautiful and he just. He is beautiful. He's a cutie. Yes. And so um, there was no second thoughts for us. Um, I was sad for his family and things like that, but. For us, we knew that we had been his, you know, whole family right. for the whole of his life. He, he didn't know anybody else, you know. So I feel very, um, I feel very like um, my decision, our decision as a family, it just felt very easy for us. Like yeah. We didn't have to question it at all. Do you feel nervous about how you'll explain his parents in this situation of how he came to be part of your family as he gets older? Do you, do you, have you and Chris talked about that? Yeah, so we've actually talked about it multiple times because it's something that we talk to Bear a lot about, mm -hmm. our biological son, you know, saying what adoption is, what it looks like, what it could look like in 16 years, you mm -hmm. know. And um, we are going to open every possible door that we can for him. Mm -hmm. First of all, from the get-go, he's going to know that he's adopted and what that means to us, what that means to hit the community around us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to respect that for the rest of his life. And when he answers questions, we're going to be honest with him. Right. And one day when we know he will want to mm -hmm. um, meet his family, um, we're going to do that for sure. And we don't know when that will be, mm -hmm. um, but that door is always open for that to happen because we just want to respect that family as well because, um, you know, we hopefully want them to love on him as well. Because the more people that love on him, the right. better. Right. A kid can't have too much exactly. love. Exactly. Exactly. And so. Um, we have boundaries set up right now, but mm -hmm. we hope that we can have a beautiful relationship one day and respect him as an adopted child because he already came with trauma. And so we're going to be working the rest of our life, yeah. pouring into him and mm -hmm. respecting him and just um, respecting the people around us who are helping us because it's a lot for a child to be adopted. Yeah. Is. And even though he's a little, he has, he doesn't know any different right now. He, in his heart, he's, he, there's something, you know, he'll grow to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to be really honest with them. Just like Bear people always ask me, like, how does Bear deal with it? We're very honest. Mm -hmm. We tell them why they're here, you know, not whole everything because some things are very traumatic, but we explain it. Like, these are their bio parents, like, mm -hmm. you know. And so we're going to do the same thing with Fox. And I'm excited to learn. I've learned a lot, um, especially on TikTok from a lot of adoptive parents. Adoptee TikTok have taught me so much, and I cannot wait to respect um Fox in the way that I have learned from so many people, but I'm honored to be his mama. I just, I can't even I'm so excited for you. Um, How excited is Bear? Oh, so excited. So, <laughs> so Bear always knows the kids are going home, right? So when yeah. we told him finally, like, Fox is staying. Right. He literally, like, transitioned to, like, this is my brother. And I know you have Yes, him. yes. <laughs> yeah, he's just so sweet. Like, he, he, he just took on that role. And he does for all kids, but when we said he's staying with us forever, mm -hmm. it, like, flipped a switch. Because Bear's the best big too. brother. Like, yeah, he is so he was involved with all of the kids. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I said he's staying forever, it was like forever. Yeah. Like I'm going to be with him forever. And I'm like, yeah, this is I'm, different. This is he's a hoffer. And so now I'll <laughs> say like the hoffer boys. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag boy mom. Uh -huh. It's so sweet. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. And you've met Fox. I have. And so I had. That's my foxy baby. <laughs> yes, we call him foxy boy, foxy baby. And oh. so they just got to enjoy him for quite a while. I think you met him when he was like little, three months or something. Oh, my gosh. Could have been before that. It was before that. Yeah. We ran into each other at yes. HEB the week that you had him placed. That's remember? right. He was in the car seat. Yeah. It just peaked. And he I did the same thing with guy, itty bitty. Little six pound baby. Yeah, just looking at him. Uh -huh. Just hello. I uh -huh. see you from here. You and know? he's just I can't like it's scary to try to share your children, but it's mm -hmm. like he's he's a joy. He's beautiful. He's happy. Like mm -hmm. oh, oh my god. He goodness. smiles all yeah, the time. He's the time. smiliest. He's the guy. most smiliest little baby ever. And he just has these like sweet little <laughs> eyes. And he looks at you all sweet and bats his eyes at I'm you. Getting emotional. He's so cute. He's absolutely precious. And when you sent me your pictures for how you're gonna announce. Yeah. <laughs> it's killing me i'm so excited because we're shooting this yes. weeks before you guys technically yes. 
you haven't even officially legally adopted him. Now, so yeah, we when are, we air it, you will have yes, the court yes. date is set. Yes, we're just a few weeks yes. away. So when you're watching this, we are mm-hmm. a week out mm-hmm. from adopting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as you're watching this now, we adopted yesterday. Yesterday. So that's so exciting, and I get to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have to invite people, and we want people who have been in our village for the, the get go, and we're really excited for that. I don't know what to expect, but. I am very excited. Yeah. What do you expect? I mean, d- okay, I've so heard. <laughs> my question is, does the caseworker come like CPS caseworker? So I don't have a CPS caseworker anymore. I have a CPS adoption worker. So basically you oh. have a CPS caseworker. Uh-huh. And then when the rights get terminated, it mm-hmm. switches to an adoption placement. So you'll get an adoption worker. Okay. Basically. Is there a time limit on um, when they do the termination of, of a parental right? So if um, it just it depends on every case. Okay. But the, there's a big court date like uh, at the six month mark. Okay. And then um, that's a huge like you'll see where the family's at, what services they've done. You'll get mm-hmm. kind of an idea of where you're at. And so for there's there's court dates like every couple of months. And so like by the time we got to the six month mark, we knew that that was going to be you know, the termination. Right. Um, but no, sometimes there's not. And we've gone, you know, I, my last um, kids that went home, I had them 18 months. And so it just depends on yeah. how parents are working services and things like that. Yeah. Do yeah. you have to go to every court date? We don't. We're invited to go. Um, as for me, it's kind of hard because I'm a stay at home mom. And so I usually can't take them. You can't take the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the beginning, they're pretty quick, like literally 10 minutes, five minutes, mm-hmm. um, you know, getting the parents in order and things like that. Right. Now, as it goes on, that six month one, you start to go. I really? would start to go because then you're going to hear like what the plan is moving forward. Mm-hmm. What have the parents done? How like how could I support these parents? Like I right. kind of get that idea at that point. Um, and then I go after that. So like my last case, a lot of people were watching me. I was going like every two weeks really? to a court date. You were with me through that. That was very emotional. Um, but I had to be there because I needed to hear what was going on because I was trying to support the family. Ah, uh, yes. And yes, yeah. I remember this. Yeah, so um, it just depends. Every case is different, literally. People always ask mm-hmm. me how long. Like you could literally have a kid a couple of days to two years, three years. I've had people who've had kids for three years that are still in care. And so, then get reunified, and potentially? Get reunified, yeah. Oh, well, that's so nice to know that there is. Yes, yes, there are so many circumstances as to things hap- happens. You know, um, life is hard, and a parent mm-hmm. can have a house one day and you know lose the house the next, and mm-hmm. so that that pushes them back. But they're still being great parents. Right. It's just something that holds them back. You know. Right. I, I've also heard, and I don't know because I'm not part of this, you know, system. Mm-hmm. But I've had a couple messages where people have said. You know, I, I love Cindy's side of things, but there are families that get placed back that shouldn't have been placed back. And yeah. the state fails them in that sense. Yeah. Have you ever been in a so, position where you felt like that was happening to you? Oh, goodness. So that's hard because not every parent's going to be perfect, right? There's mm-hmm. no cookie cutter parent. I'm not perfect. Some people look at me and they think these kids should be with her. She has a home. They're financially stable. Their family is beautiful. But that doesn't matter. Right. Their family could live, you know, in a, in a, in a simpler lifestyle than I do. Mm-hmm. But because it doesn't look like mine, mm-hmm. people are comparing them. Yes. But that family is just as perfect for them right. as I would be. Yeah. Or better, because that's their biological family. Right. And so I have had situations where I feel uneasy. Of course, I've taken care of kids for over a year. Mm-hmm. But you have to believe that that parent's going to, you know, give their child all they need. Yeah. Like I've had kids for a year. That par- that parent hasn't been able to be a full time parent for a year. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's scary. Mm-hmm. But you just have to believe they will. Um, I've had circumstances where I believe like, um, you know, they still have learning to do. Mm-hmm. But hopefully we can stay connected and I can help them through that. Or they can you know have family members that will help them. Mm-hmm. But it's hard. I have kids a long time, and of course I'm scared because you know I want to protect them. And I heard why they got removed. Right. And sending them back is sometimes very hard. But yeah. Um, I have to believe that their fa- parents want to be great parents. And I know a lot of them and they do. Mm-hmm. They do want to be great parents. They just haven't had the opportunity to. Right. But um, it is a scary situation. My emotions are always <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> right. I, I do think I know the answer to this. Uh-huh. But it, speaking on and touching on like a feeling uneasy in those. Have you ever been asked by the state what your opinion is on a child? And if you think if they should go back into their home? Yeah. So, um, 
towards the, I wouldn't say the end of the case, but you know, there's always talks. Mm -hmm. So the kids have a CASA worker who represents the child. They also have a guardian ad litem who represents the child, their their lawyer. And they always ask you, how are they after visits? What Mm -hmm. does it look like? You know, when they're with their family, are they the same with you? Are they are with their family? Like they, they're asking those questions because they want to know, you know, is that kid thriving in that environment? And when they're there for an hour, Mm -hmm. how are they coming home? Are they distraught? Are they, you know, that's such a telling thing. My stepmom, she always said we would see it and she could pull out my folders to this day from like whenever I was in kindergarten or so on the weekends that my mom would show Mm -hmm. that next week at school yes for like the first three days I would be like defiant or talking out Mm -hmm. or just not my usual self because my routine had been interrupted and so I would you know push the buttons that I thought I could push and then kind of get back into into gear so I'm sure that that's why behavior says everything yeah even with an infant you know, really? um, like what are some thing, of the things you think you'd see with an infant? So for instance, like, you know, I've had babies and so it's hard with the newborns. They don't know, but as soon as they're like five months, they know. Right. Mm-hmm. So you hand them over. Of course it's scary. They're mm-hmm. crying, mm-hmm. but it's, can you, can the parent soothe them while they're there? Mm-hmm. Are they doing changing their diaper while they're there? And when they give them back to me, what they're looking for is like, are they updating me? Like, Hey, she, I changed her diaper one time. She ate this much ounces. Right. And then you're looking for after that, how is the baby? Is the baby um, restless at night one mm-hmm. time? Are they having a hard time going to sleep at night? Are they whining? Are they clingy? Mm-hmm. I've had kids after visits just want to sit on me and hold, just hold and sit. And we'd sit for like hours. Just need some and it comfort. would take two days for them to get back into the routine because it's hard being stripped from your parent the first time. And then every week, every week seeing them, okay, you're going back, you're going back. Mm-hmm. And so it's a gradual thing. And as the parents, when, when the kids see their parents, it's supposed to be a positive thing. So mm-hmm. they're watching. Um, and so that's why I try to pour in, like I give the parent updates. They give me updates like, Hey, this week your child did this. Mm-hmm. And that way the transitions get easier as the weeks go on. So they know that I drop them off. I pick them up, but gradually we're going home. Right. And so that's why I build a relationship with the family mm-hmm. because I want them. I want that child to know like, Hey, me and your mom, we're friends and we're yeah. in this together. We both love you. Yeah. And I think you also want that mom to know, I'm not trying yes. to take your baby. Yes. Yes. Cause you I've know? had that before right. where automatically they're just like, you know, Oh, this foster parent. No, no ma'am. Right. Uh-uh. I want you to have your baby back because I could not imagine that feeling. And that's oh, why when I either. get a baby, I'm like, my emotions are wild because I could never imagine. Yeah, and absolutely. so once that mom figures out like, no, this, she's not trying to take my kids from me. Like I'm sending pictures, mm-hmm. updates every week. I'm telling them, Hey, your kid, your child rolled over with me. That's mm-hmm. so exciting. See if they can do it with you, you know, yeah. sending pictures. And once we get to a safe point, mm-hmm. um, I like to give my phone number and we text and I'll send like, Hey, we had a doctor. Say, how do you today. communicate? Yeah. So in the beginning we cannot. Okay. So, uh, it just depends on your worker when they believe that it's a safe environment because they also want to make sure you're protected. You know, I have yeah. children. And so, um, we wait until it's a safe time. Sometimes it's soon. Sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's six months. And then I ask, can I have their phone number? Mm-hmm. And, I send pictures every day. I send updates every day. That's and really then like, nice. you know, things that they can do. And mm-hmm. um, it just opens the door up, especially because then you transition from one hour visits to overnight visits and you want to be very in- included in that. Right. So, involved. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's every, every case is different. So um, it's been a journey. And so that's why when I say Fox's case has been the quietest it has. And mm-hmm. Yeah, but we, now we have, you know, another child placed with us, and it's going to be yeah. different, too. It's going to yeah. be different, too, so. Absolutely. But a little bitty. A little bitty. A little bitty baby. Yes. She's she bigger, was, though. Yeah, she is getting bigger. <laughs> but she was, like, four pounds she was whenever dying. she came to yeah. you. Like, she looked small even in preemie clothes. Little baby. Little baby, baby clothes. Little baby doll clothes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, What's been your favorite part about this journey of being a foster parent? Now that you are a foster to adopt family, does it feel like? that's the favorite part or do you feel like just Mm, loving all these babies yeah so you know obviously um adopting fox is is definitely a highlight now but um no i think that loving so many babies Mm -hmm. i feel called to be a mom and pour into these children because i just feel like i have the patience the love the you know everything i can give to them and Mm -hmm. so my favorite thing has been Um, watching them grow, like getting them so little and then getting to be there for milestones because they're important to their families. And I appreciate them Mm -hmm. like those milestones that they have to miss and then sharing them with their biological family. Mm -hmm. And some of the best moments I've had are sharing our moments with their family, like birthday parties together, 
um, being oh, wow. in, and now being included in like text messages like hey mm-hmm. look how good they're doing they started preschool like that is so That's awesome wonderful. and to think like I had this child who came into my home like mm-hmm. you know sad and now look at them back with their mom and like it's so exciting and um, Christmas time we give like gifts to them and it's just like something that's like so awesome to see right. is that they're thriving after and the parents are thriving after but being a parent in general is just like my favorite thing <laughs> and it's hard like you know like I have a newborn and now it's, it's, hard. it's definitely hard but I feel like um, seeing them grow up and just like I don't know I get to be a part of those things is really 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 amazing for me and, and for my husband because you know he's such a great dad right. yeah he yeah. is he's a great dad yeah he absolutely he's is. very patient <laughs> yes yes and you've said this before but if you go into foster care you're, you're going in it as a partnership like oh, yeah. your husband has to be 100 percent on board as well oh yeah a lot of people ask me like what's your advice for a new foster parent that and was I'm about like, to be my question make sure <laughs> you're both 100 100 yeah because like as a mom sometimes moms do um you know yearn to take care of children and it's just mm-hmm. like it comes second nature to some of us not all of us but it comes second nature to us and so i can say yes to so many kids right oh yeah me too but if your husband is not on board 100 mm-hmm. percent, it's never gonna work you're gonna burn out you're gonna feel like everything is on you because it's a lot you're doing paperwork you're dealing with trauma emotions all of the things and so you need your partner to be a hundred percent in it with you and so like when a child comes into our home i need my partner to love that baby like it's ours yeah not like mm, you're just you're, you're watching this child no uh-huh. no 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 we are raising this child together right. for a, a period of their life yes that yes. they can never get back literally <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's someone's whole it's a life heavy thing in our hands exactly and being able to respect the people around that child as mm-hmm. well because that's important because it's scary a lot of people hear about like foster parenting and it's scary you know like Oh my God, I'd be scared to see the biological family at first. Yeah, that's me. Things. I told you. Yes. I was like, I don't know if I could go to court. Yes. And it, it, it's a scary thing. You just never know. But you got to believe that they're not trying to hurt your, their child, right? Mm-hmm. They have the best interest. They might be mad mm-hmm. and, and they probably are. Their kid's probably mad as well. And things are um, very tense, but the, the well-being is of the child. And so if all of us can just be on the same page here, we're, the child's going to thrive. And that's all. That's the only thing that's important really to me. As long as you're pouring into that child, we will accept you to be here. <laughs> and, I'm proud of you. Oh, and I'm so excited for you. Oh, thank you. I know that this was a long journey. Yeah. Obviously, it's been almost a year. Yeah. And it was emotional for you and yeah. heavy because it was very different than, than any other case that you've had. Um, yeah. Just from what I know personally as, as somebody who's a very close friend of yours, obviously, yeah. that's private information, all the details and such. But I'm proud of you. Thank you. You really are. At, at, an amazing human. And I think you're going to be a fantastic mom to Fox. <laughs> I think he's in the right place. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all were the right family to take I'm him in that December night. I'll never forget the, those text messages when you were like, I'm getting a baby. Yeah. Like I can't share much. Right. So mm-hmm. like, but I can share like, Hey, we're getting a baby mm-hmm. and you know, he's itty bitty. And basically that's it. Even like now that I've adopted, I can't share much. What I'm sharing with you is what I can share. Yeah. And so I'm very, I'm very excited um, that we get to adopt Fox and he's part of our family. I cannot wait for you guys to meet him. Um, if you're watching this today, you will know that um, I have posted on all my other social media platforms that we are excited to have another Hoffer, another of them Hoffers. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, until last week, I thought Cindy's last name was Hoffers. <laughs> she literally did. She was like putting Hoffers on all of the things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. So did um, Banner. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did you the did. first initial, the very first time. Look, he's about to chime in. Where it says Cindy Hoffers, them Hoffers. <laughs> oh, did I put the answer? I thought it was the answer while I was typing it down. It was like an automatic and, it, process. and people might assume that. So like, I no, did. I, I, uh, I checked. <laughs> I checked on your social media. I was like, is it Hoffers or Hoffer? And I saw it was Hoffer. So I must have just spaced having to retype that. That's all right. Yeah. My husband so. was the one that brought it up actually the day before guys, Cindy I've corrected known Paige me. three years, you guys. <laughs> What? Hey, what's my maiden name? Blasting game. Dang. <laughs> uh, what's I'm, mine? <laughs> you, she don't even know my real last name. And it's a part of my account. I have heard it. I've heard it before. It's a part of your account. My real last No, Hoffers. I said, you didn't even know how to spell my, my last name. No. Oh, oh, I was like, it's not online. I don't know. Cindy, I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I don't know. You know, my brain is mush right now. I'm not. If I said it, you're going to be like, yeah. It's so, it's, so it's, the, it's super like um, Hispanic. Does it My name like, is Cynthia <laughs> Contreras. I would have never guessed Contreras, that. Uh, <laughs> or say like Contreras. 
Contreras. I would have said Contre- Contreras. Contreras. <laughs> I like that a lot more. Oh my goodness. A lot more. Listen, I am part Puerto Rican. Malita just did not teach me Spanish. She tried and I was eight, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I try. And everybody else in my family is as pale as they come. Okay. So you know, a lot of people say that about me. They're like, she's white. And I'm like, I'm literally Mexican. <laughs> oh, she sound British. What literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally Mexican. <laughs> no, but that's so funny. She is, though, for real. I am. My dad's Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was white. Yes. Yeah. Did you grow up with a lot of culture in your in your yeah. family, though, oh, because yeah. of that? Does he have a large family that actually, like, celebrates and does, like, Me? fun things? Your dad. Oh, um, so he, we actually don't have a large family. So my dad um, had a kind of a rough childhood. and mm. But he has been very um, wonderful about you know, giving us um, some culture and things like that. Um, we really respect Mexican heritage. Mm-hmm. I've always said I'm half Mexican. Um, if you came to our home, you would know that. Mm-hmm. We celebrate Mexican traditions, making tamales, things like that. Um, we you can make tamales? Oh, yeah. We make them every year. Teach me we how make them every to make year. tamales. Mm-hmm. I love tamales. Yeah. So it's just that people just see me and don't, they just assume that I'm not. That's okay. I look oh. white. No. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> it is what it is. I hate to interrupt, but is this going to be a part of you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I was yeah. just trying to. Yeah. yeah. She is Mexican. <laughs> she is Mexican. Will you, will you send me a picture of your dad so I can answer <laughs> when you say that? My dad is Mexican. My dad's Mexican. <laughs> yeah, so well. And then but she says it in a British accent. Yeah. Contreras. <laughs> Contreras. I wondered because. I wondered if, like, you had a big family with, like, lots of cousins and siblings and such mm-hmm. because you seem like you want a big family. Yeah, I do. How many kids do you want? Oh, man, I like, like, five or six kids. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. I'm fourth and final. She um, told me yesterday, she's like, you're the kind of mom who wants to just sit on a farm churning butter with all your kids. I'm like. <laughs> no, yeah, literally. No, I'm going to go buy butter at H-E-B and then we'll sit on the farm. <laughs> Cindy in no my way. brain is one of those moms. What is that? It's Jay. Who is that? Hello? Jay just prioritized his content over our podcast. He's filming. Jay? Jay, if you don't shut the fuck up. (laughs) Jay, quiet on set. Okay. (laughs) You can hear Um, you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. So, anyways, I'm very excited to share. I was nervous to share. Paige knows that because, you know. I, d- I am very respectful mm-hmm. when I do share about foster care on the internet. I'm very respectful. And if you followed me for a while, you'll put th- you would look at my account and think, all those kids are hers. How would you even know? Except for I share Bear's face every once in a while. Yeah. But nobody usually knows until they're like, oh, she's a foster parent. Mm-hmm. And so I was afraid to share, but he is beautiful. And now. I think you're afraid of all the backlash and such of people thinking you only took him in so yeah. that you could adopt him. Yeah. But that's just absolutely not who you are. Right. No, so. and, and that is scary because, like, some people like assume, like, oh, you adopted a baby. You can only take babies. But I had this discussion um, with Jay. He's a, he's an adoptive parent. And I get called for babies a lot because mm-hmm. I've taken in babies a lot. So what happens is, is that my agency knows that I can handle newborns who are coming with different things. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a variety of things babies are um, taken from their parents from. But I can handle those traumas. I've done it now. Mm-hmm. I've had high-risk children. I've had... You know, um, all different kinds of things that the kids come with, I have dealt with. And mm-hmm. so I get calls a lot because they know our home can mm-hmm. handle a newborn baby. Do you feel comfortable saying some of the things or reasons why a newborn would be removed? No, I can say that. I can't say why mine have been removed. But so a lot of times that people should know and be aware of that is if a baby's getting removed from the hospital, there's usually two reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, it's usually drugs. So the child is, um, you know, having withdrawals or the mom just had was on something. Sometimes the baby doesn't have withdrawals, but there's that or there's domestic violence and there's signs on the mother. So if the mom comes in, you know, with bruises and things like that, Mm -hmm. they will ask her if she feels safe. And they even ask every mom. I got asked that. I'm probably sure you got asked that. I did. And um, sometimes she'll say her circumstances are not safe. And so what happens is they'll remove the child, which is sad because the mom would probably be a wonderful mom until Mm -hmm. she gets in better better circumstances and can get away from that situation. Does the state help her get into those Um, Yeah, they will. Sometimes they'll put her in like a woman's home and things Mm -hmm. like that as much as they can, if she wants the help. Right, sometimes they do. Yeah, and then 
for those, um, uh, it can go really quickly that if they're working their services, she gets away from the situation within six months, the baby can go home. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are the two big reasons. So, um, drugs are a very sad thing that happens and, um, it's sad because sometimes moms don't know that they're pregnant and, you know, things happen like that and they deliver premature and then, oh my God, you know, so those are two huge reasons that babies usually get taken. Now, if the baby's a little older and you're like, why did the baby get taken? It's either they found, you know, neglect, things like that, or the baby had been abused and there's all kinds of situations, but mainly you've seen it all. I've seen it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that take a toll on you? Yeah. 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 I know we talked about this, about how you probably should talk to somebody. Yeah, because, like, I definitely, like, accept the situation, and mm-hmm. then my mind goes straight to, like, let me protect this child. Mm-hmm. What do I need to do for their physical, emotional, um, you know, spiritual well-being mm-hmm. that can help this child come out of that situation? And so it's very, uh, very emotional. Um, and I, it does take a toll on me, and I say that I should probably talk to somebody. Since I can't really tell people about what happens, yeah. a therapist would probably be a perfect situation, and I should. I think about that because I kind of just, like, pack it on down, and gradually it's going to burst me. Yeah. And I did take the summer off from taking new placements because mm-hmm. of that. I had children for 18 months, and my heart was just, I was emotionally drained. Mm-hmm. And so and that's why we just opened back up and we have a newborn baby. But that would definitely takes a toll on you, especially because you're keeping it in. Well, and you're not hearing fun exciting news no. like it's really dark parts yeah. of humanity that you're like oh yeah this is this and is not something that you know you'll hear is like oh cps takes kids for invalid reasons and i don't think you're wrong cps definitely fails a lot of children i don't mm-hmm. think you're wrong but i can tell you every single child that i have had mm-hmm. was a valid reason right and it's heartbreaking that's your personal experience so far. as my personal experience because right. i know definitely other people have had different situations where the child should not have been removed but from my experience mm-hmm. all of them have been traumatic all of them has been that child been through more things than i've been through and i'm right. a 30 year old adult and it's heartbreaking so for me to be there and i just feel like i have the mental capacity to keep taking it on mm-hmm. and that's sometimes really hard you have to take care of your your mental health in order to feel that way still yeah. though can't just yeah shove it in the back and say I can handle it right. I can handle it and I just keep, keep taking that. it just <laughs> keep taking it because somebody has to and I just know that I'm a, I, know. I feel that we're a good home for these kids and so I know and and you are Paige, please talk in your mic. yeah and so um, I keep saying yes because I you just, think you'd say yes again right now no <laughs> technically you can't so can you? <laughs> so um, so since I have a newborn I mm-hmm. always base it on how full my cup is okay yeah so like fox is a sweet baby and he's sleeping through the night and so i knew that i could open my home up to a newborn Mm -hmm. so we opened our home to six and under so we just got called for a newborn but um, i knew i could handle that right when they called you you were like okay i I can i can handle this but if i knew if i could and like if he was you know a harder baby or whatnot um (laughs) or he would needed me more uh, than i would have not have but right now because i have such a little itty bitty newborn baby and i'm up every three hours Mm -hmm. i could not take i know my mind could not mentally take on another child now next month ask me again i'm probably gonna tell you (laughs) yes as soon as i (laughs) am comfortable um but when you adopt sometimes they want you to take a break so yeah. I think that's what you're, you know, saying. But well, I, I was talking about the three rule you were telling yeah. me about. You can't have so many, yes, youngins. So yeah, so there's a so you, <laughs> that was youngins. So funny. This made me laugh with Paige because I said um, that I can't have three under one. Yeah, I was like, what that means is you can't have three babies under a year old. And so I have two babies under a year old right now. So technically, I could take a toddler, um, but I just I mentally could not take it right now. There's a lot. Being a newborn mama is a lot. There are certain people that are just (laughs) built to be really fantastic parents of multiples. And then there are people like me. No, Paige is is such a great mom. Doing a really great job with the ones I've got. But if, 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 who are, at least I'm trying. No, if I had. Oh my gosh, if I took on any more though right now, I would be too, I'd be too thin. But you know, like, and this is something that moms need to hear that. What I can take on mm-hmm. and what you can take on mm-hmm. can fill the yeah, I yeah. That's what you can take on. Right. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Just because you see me do it easy with four kids doesn't mean you're doing less than. Mm-hmm. It just means that's what you can take on and you're giving your all to that one child. Yeah, because I've done that with you before. Yeah. Where I've been like, holy cow, she can take like four kids to the grocery store, yeah. has her wagon, has a list, yeah. is like superwoman. And I'm like, we please watch the baby so yeah. I can just go by myself for 30 minutes. Every mom is different. You can hear moms who are struggling with just their one baby. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. What I can take on is because I've done it a long time now. 
and my, my my motherhood has gotten a little bit better. You're experienced. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're I think so I'm experienced. experienced. But even then, even though, because I believe you're also very experienced, did you you have you know two teenage boys and but just in such different ways. In different ways. What what you can handle as a mother, mm-hmm. everybody is different. I feel like okay. I got teens down. From yeah. like 12 to 16, I've got it. Even 17, you know, yeah. me and my teenage boys, we, we have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. They tell me too much, to be totally <laughs> honest with you, too There's much. There's so many of the stories she tells oh me my gosh. are hilarious. They're just teenage boys. There's okay. this story. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like they should share because it's so cute. Oh, Lord. The one with the Riz that you got. The- oh, <laughs> yeah. So do y'all know I've got the Riz? Do y'all know what the Riz is? Because I didn't know Have you ever heard Riz of the was. Riz? I didn't realize it, but apparently got the Riz. I've got the Riz. So my, my son <laughs> has a girlfriend and um, occasionally he will come to me for advice on different situations. And, you know, he just was on Snapchat. And I was like, why don't you send her a picture? Like, send her a mirror selfie. Yeah. Like, teaching my 16-year-old yeah. how to take a mirror selfie is an interesting <laughs> experience. Yeah. But uh, he was like, she, I guess she saved it. And he was like, yes. Oh, my Just goodness. like, so, you know, it's like a win. Well, then he's on the football bus on the way down yeah. to, I love you, but get smoked by this other team my god (laughs) they took out like four of our players like one of them got sent to the hospital for a broken collarbone the other one had darn near concussion vance played the whole game and i was like somebody somebody get my baby off the field they don't play play football is serious Serious. we had a mercy call at uh halftime because it was 62 to (laughs) zero okay it was (laughs) got got the rest but nonetheless guys Paige was the topic of the bus i was the topic of the bus ride (laughs) because vance was texting me and I don't remember oh I was telling him listen what's up with homecoming proposals oh nowadays why do they have to be so huge I mean some of them are bigger than wedding proposals oh, sure. it's getting a little out of hand I have, I have so many projects that I have to and posters I have to make already for school <laughs> let alone another one for uh, homecoming, you know, homecoming proposal. proposals and then they have to have music and bears yes. and chocolates and flowers yes. and blah, blah, blah. so I'm trying to help the guy and I was like everybody does the same thing why don't you burn her a cd of like y'all's Y'all love songs right i was like and you can get her like some cute headphones and like a little radio she can listen to it on like that's such a vibe right and he sent <laughs> he sent me this. back my friends i'll call you the wizard of oz <laughs> Because I'm like, because you're so cool. Like they probably think you're so cool. The it's the best. Of Oz. It is absolutely the best. I will say, so she has the riz. They embarrass me because if I go in public with them, they all introduce me as positively Paige. My husband, my children, everyone will be like, "Have you met? Have you met positively Paige?" And I'm like, "Stop." But your username is so like friendly. Like sometimes, like we're like, "Who are you talking to?" I'm like, "Positively Paige." <laughs> Because that's what people know you at first. People, at first people were like, I didn't even know your name. Like my name, because my name's not on my account unless you look for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> you were saved in my phone as them offers for solid yes, two I'm months. Yes, I'm telling you. But that is hilarious. So she's the Wizard of Oz, case yes, y'all were in case, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Some people get my, my username mixed up. Did you know the Positively page? They're like... If I snap back at anybody, because God forbid I'm a human who doesn't like to be disrespected. Yeah. Um, they're like, that's not very positive of you. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I don't know who told you that I was going to be positive all the time. I mean, I'm positively myself. And sometimes sh- she can put you in your place. <laughs> if you does. need it. Only Period. if you need it. <laughs> only if you need it. She be putting people in their place, you guys. I'm not even kidding. I have stories for days on page. We don't went to lunch. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> This okay. okay if we're gonna to buckle up into <laughs> this, let's just let's just tell the whole story, okay? Yeah, let's tell it. We're eating lunch at a mall, first of all. A we're mall. at a mall we're during a, lunchtime. We're at no fancy place during the weekday, and there is a round table behind us, full of women that are older than I am, mm-hmm. probably by double. I'd say my mom's age. Older, <laughs> and they're enjoying. Lunch. The ends of their lunch. They are. They were done. They were signing receipts when we walked in. Yes. We sat behind them. I have my six-month-old daughter at the time. You had Fox, who it was, was eight, months, eight months. And our happy. husbands. Yes, me, you, and your mom. Mm-hmm. And Fox and Juliet are talking across oh the table God, at so each cute. other. You know how babies do. Ah, yeah. Little babies who don't know how to actually speak yet, right? Mm-hmm. And this woman. This crotchety and she's old right woman. right here in front of me. So, like, I'm sitting here. She's literally so close to me. Ooh. She snaps back. She turns around. She did one of these. Really? She did. And I said, 
Really what? You've never heard a happy baby? Do you want me to stand up? (laughs) So fast. We're at the end of the table, and Fox is right here next to me. And I said, they're having fun. Hello? They're not even screaming. We were so mad. So Paige is fuming. I've never seen an old woman not enjoy sweet, happy baby sounds. I was shook. They were happy. Shook. If they were crying, we would have removed our babies from the situation. Of course. I would would, would comfort my child if she was crying. She's just sitting here talking. I'm sorry she's interrupting your conversation. Yes. But holy baloney. So her friends fuming. were embarrassed. Yes, she all oh, her friends were embarrassed. But Paige is fuming. So then we I have to so leave. Mad. You guys, this is what took it. <laughs> this is what's an extra. So we're leaving, which I love because this is funny. We're leaving because we have to go change the baby's diapers. So me and Paige just go because we're going to change our baby's diapers. Yeah. And their friends are walking <laughs> out. And I thought, okay, we're done. We're just going to we're going to side eye them, right? That I told y'all I was Puerto Rican, no, right? this girl snaps off at the, at the lady. <laughs> I, I didn't snap off. I she just didn't. said, she she was I just said, I hope you know that your friend was very rude. And I hope everyone at church knows that she's a hypocrite. <laughs> so that's what she says. And <laughs> I meant it. And I'd say it again. <laughs> I hope everybody knows that you're judgmental towards little bitty babies. And Who are you so to happy. turn around? <laughs> I'm in the public. Literally. That's something that bothers me. Yes. That's something that actually pisses me off is when people upload those videos of babies crying and they're like <laughs> angry in their seat. <laughs> oh, I just want to thump you right in like the throat. We're in public, ma'am. Hell, it's the public. I Okay, I get it, though. I, I do get it. There's a factor that I understand. Like, yes. nobody wants to sit in a plane and be stuck with a crying baby. The right. mom right. doesn't want no. to be stuck with the crying baby. She's trying. She's doing her best. The baby doesn't understand what's going on. You're stuck in a tin can in the sky. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do here, George? Right. We're all doing our best. Why would you pull out your phone and video it? So that you can bitch and it's complain. It's because I've been that mom of a crying baby. and I'm, I'm, I'm crying I'm, with I'm, that I'm child. I'm devastated in there. I'm, I'm like yeah. doing everything that I can and I know you're staring at me. Yeah. And I know that you're judging me and I'm just trying to not interrupt and you. And I know it's loud. Yes. I know it's annoying to you. Yes. And I don't want it to happen. No. But we're also in the same space as you. I'm trying mm-hmm. my best. Mm-hmm. And that's why when circumstances like the restaurant happened, I was in awe because I'm like, they're so yeah. happy. There were other children in the restaurant. Yeah. And it was loud it in there. It's like, oh my God. Like our it's not like a fancy restaurant. Time. No. It's not like we were sitting down for a candlelit dinner, y'all. It we were literally. at a restaurant, an Italian restaurant in a mall. <laughs> like, <laughs> we weren't that bougie. So, it that's just, that goes all over me. I do understand, like, there's some airlines that want to move to adults only. Yeah. 100% for it. Yeah. Do it. Because I don't want somebody that's going to be rude and judgmental of my baby on the plane either. Right. So, <laughs> you don't want to sit next to me and I don't want to sit next to you. The struggles of motherhood never end. <laughs> like, and that's why we keep saying, like, we're just trying our best here. Literally. Because we're also learning to be a mom around people. And our children have to learn to be around people. Yes. And that's, like, the hard part when they're like, you know, well, we'll keep your kids quiet. Well, like, they have to learn to be around you guys at a restaurant, yes. too. But. Yeah. And I think the moment you become a mom, you're expected to yeah. be extraordinary. Oh, yeah. You have to be perfect. You have yes. to be on. You have to. Your kids are perfect. You are perfect. You look together. Your body is right. Mm-hmm. You know, you show up all the time. You don't get to have down days or you're a bad mom and people judge you. And I just think that's why so many moms are drowning in yeah. their mental health I because agree. they're so afraid of the judgment of everybody else on top of the pressure of being a good mom absolutely it's already so Never hard ending. all by yourself yeah like i'm already i am my worst enemy Same. whenever it comes to validating myself as to whether or not i'm doing a good enough job i'm constantly worried i don't need other people putting in their two cents on situations frankly that they don't fully understand yep and they couldn't possibly yep. Because they're not walking in my shoes. And I forget, like, sometimes parents forget that they were in it. Like, yeah. you know, people who sometimes they forget they're in it or they have, you know, nieces and nephews. And mm-hmm. It's like, that's really hard. But I think we're all trying our best. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good You're job. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. <laughs> You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. There's well, people back here in the studio, y'all. This was exciting. That was a good episode. I'm really excited that we got to share all of those things. Yeah. That you're adopting. <laughs> we have a new baby, y'all. We do. Hashtag boy mom. Hashtag Fox Boy. Foxy Boy, he's so beautiful. Yeah. Y'all, he's so beautiful. As always, you guys, keep, keep the giggles going and the love flowing. And until next time, Mom, Mom knows, knows best. best. Or at least she is trying her best. That's the truth. Bye, y'all. See you later. Mom's the Word podcast is recorded at the Museum of Neon Lights in Frisco, Texas. It's a selfie studio open to the public. Mention the podcast and you'll get an exclusive 10% off.